what should quantum activism do in connection with religion and spirituality? Uh, there is also an associated question because we, um, in a sense, the new paradigm based on quantum physics on the primacy of consciousness uh, has integrated science and spirituality. This brings up the question in view of the fact that spirituality is scientific, do, you, do we even need religions today which used to, in the olden days, teach us spirituality? Um, both questions can be addressed um, simultaneously. The um, separation of church and state that democracy indeed uh, accepts uh, is the idea of secularism. We should keep church and state separate. It was very important in 18th and 19th century where indeed um, one faction of religion could monopolize uh, spiritual uh, practices and spiritual explorations of all people. And of course the idea is that people are different. Um, we need a multiplicity of uh, practices for satisfying the spiritual needs of all people. So we created this idea of secularism. But eventually secularism itself became a barrier because we cannot even teach uh, things that are really spiritual and scientific rather than religion and sectorial. Um, example is meditation, example is uh, prayer which is non-sectarian. So uh, the new science is telling us that we should modify this idea of secularism. We should keep, still keep religion out of the affairs of state and state should not sponsor any specific religion. That part of secularism is good. But we should introduce spirituality back into our educational systems, back into the systems of state because that only subscribes to a scientific aspect of our being. We are spiritual beings. We have an incentive uh, towards investing into spiritual wholeness, happiness, holiness, and all that stuff. So uh, this idea, a post-secularism, has to take shape. Um, I also must say that the, look what is actually happening in the uh, political scene because of these misunderstandings of uh, spirituality and religion. What is happening is that scientific materialism has made quite a substantial part of the society into atheists because they believe in the supremacy of matter and primacy of matter. So naturally, religions have become very defensive and they have become gone back to their fundamentalist roots and um, these roots are archaic. They uh, often come with very archaic beliefs which are not, not only not scientifically tenable, but really hampers us from further evolution and growth. For example, the idea that God is separate from uh, the world, dualism. Dualism is not a scientifically accepted idea, but dualism also prevents us from really uh, using the idea of God, using the idea of that there is a causal force in our life that is not materially uh, sourced and materially directed. Um, it, if God is separate from us, then we cannot obviously use the causality that comes from God in our life uh, with our own volition. Uh, the distinction of free will and God's will, human will and God's will, is a disastrous idea. So the new science tells us that there is only one source of free will. You can call it God if you wish, but in the new science we call it non-local consciousness. The idea that there is, uh, besides the individual ego uh, consciousness, which is very local, very signal oriented. Uh, there is a consciousness, an ordinary state of consciousness where we don't need signals to communicate. We are interconnected already. And this is what spiritual traditions call God. We now can call it non-local consciousness. Non-local because it does not require any signal. So in this way, if we integrate both the ideas of scientific materialism, that matter is valid, which spiritual traditions ignore, and the idea of spirituality that uh, spiritual traditions put up, but scientists, materialist scientists ignore, if we can put them together, and we, uh, we must because that's what the new science is telling us, then that kind of integration can solve the problem of polarization that is affecting society in a major way, that is affecting all societies in such a way that 50% of the people uh, rather prefer to be dualists and 50% rather prefer to be atheists and materialists and both have become exclusive dogmas. The new science can integrate, it's inclusive, but 
who is going to hear? Because both sides are so polarized. And you have to use activism to unfreeze us from this very frozen situation, uh, the compipolarization. I think, I think this is the major task. This is one of the major tasks of quantum activism. We have to bring the message of the new science to both camps and uh, let them see that indeed uh, we don't lose anything. Both sides are included. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain. But we have to be patient in the process. We have to use means in such a way that they're compatible with our end objectives. And um, this is what quantum activism tries to do.